by everyone you are on the channel under world history. We will analyze the biography and back up with facts certain acts of criminals or gangs of the last century. Our videos carry only informative content. Any attack is punishable by law. Do not forget about it. Enjoy watching. Our today's hero is probably the most important racketeer of that period. Louis the accountant managed from the usual. A guy who is hired to be beaten up to become a man to whom entire industries obeyed under his. A gang that received the name of the Corporation of Murders for its bloodthirstiness worked as patronage. And the FBI determined the modeling itself as public enemy number one. Louis Buckalter was born in February 1897 in New York City. The youngest in a family consisting of one version of the family, according to the other, of 11 children Rose and Barnett's parents were both Jewish immigrants. Both came to the States with their first spouses, and both they were lost here. So their union was already a merger of two families with children who then only replenished with new accountants under these conditions. It was not until the upbringing of children that all forces were spent on their provision and the offspring were left to their own devices most of the time. But even in such scenarios, little Louis did not show the slightest hint of deviant behavior around adults considered him a shy boy who should make a decent member of American society. The rank under which he will go down in history gradually made its way to the light in 1912. He was arrested for participating mass brawl, and rumors began to reach her mother that her favorite modeling by thefts and robbery, she then either could not correct him or did not want to. By that point, the Barnet had already passed away and Rose was single-handedly supporting Louis, so most of her time was still wasted on attempts to earn money and not on raising a son. Therefore, turn a blind eye to the fact that he had a fight with someone there or with someone something was taken away was easier than trying to constantly reason with him. Besides, then such behavior of adolescence was not something out of the ordinary. Many in the immigrant communities grew up in the same way. This did not mean that in the future such a person will definitely become a bandit and Rose had proof of her arguments for 15 years who had already dropped out of school. Louis got a legal job as a messenger for $3 a week, giving most of the earnings to his mother. However, the criminal world still continued to suck. The young accountant and his mother deep theft robbery did not go anywhere from his life. Adventures in bars and billiard rooms where he met local characters on the other side of the law. And one such character named Jacob Gore Shapiro will become his partner for many years. It was the acquaintance with him that marked the immersion braces with Shapiro. They organized a small gang and terrorized the local street vendors. They demanded they have money for protection. And when they refused, they crushed their po doing it. This is how many days, how much it took in order for the merchant to start paying. In addition to this, they traded in burglaries for which Luis was arrested three times and from 15 to 16 he spent a little more than a year in prison and was released in the summer of 17. However, not even half a year had passed as an accountant again thundered into prison on the same charge on January 18th he received a year and a half in Sing Sing prison in the 19th he left and in the 20th and 5 sat down again in the firm of freedom only on March 20 second and from from then until the late 1930s. Buckle Tur no longer looked at the walls of the prison from the inside. Although arrests will still be almost regulating the event in his life when Louis was released again, it turned out that the world had changed so much since Prohibition had underground distilleries everywhere his peers were making good money bootlegging, and the punishment for this activity was ridiculous. However, Buckle Tur chose a different path. Did he then know what it was? will bring him mountains of money or just one along the beaten track. It doesn't matter much, since with both hands in the 22nd year began his career as a labor racketeer that will give him everything he is about, could only dream of destroying hundreds of human lives along the way. Before starting a story about the formation of an accountant as a labor racketeer, it is worth first telling about how labor 
the racket actually appeared in the States so that you have a better idea of the role of modeling in the history of this illegal way to earn superficially on my channel. I have already touched on this topic in a video about Arnold Rootstein, however. Now we need to dive a little deeper labor racket originates since the end of the 19th century. Then there was a mass migration of Jews from Eastern Europe which went in large numbers to work for the garment industry. Such a large influx of cheap labor has untied the hands of the employer who drove their workers into inhuman conditions, which is why everything began to appear more unions fighting for decent working conditions and wages if trade unions could not agree. They took us out of the workers' cars and strikes, and then the gangsters appeared who were first hired by the employer to disperse these pickets, and then the trade unions to resist the violent oppression of strikes and protect their leaders and workers. That is, first the gangsters hired just as fighters for a fixed fee, and at first they were satisfied with this role. First a well-known mercenary of this kind was the monk Eastman. At the end of the 19th century, he led the strongest along with the gang, five corners of a group of gangsters in the labor wars. He acted on the side of employers and dispersed demonstrations with 1897 to 1904, however, he did not perceive this as a way of earning seriously and did not place any bets on him. The next gangster who already saw opportunities in labor racketeering became Jack Zelik in 1908. He led the former Eastman gang and took advantage of a mass strike in 1909, infiltrated the trade union movements, and the strike of 20,000s of women from the clothing industry continued for six months, and Zelik with his thugs took the side of the workers as a result. At the end of it, he got into several trade unions and received constant pay for himself and his fighters in the 12th year. Zelik was killed and his work was continued by Benny Fain, who further increased the presence of gangsters in the trade union movement. Even data were preserved on how much he received. Fain paid him personally for his power services $50 a week and another 10 for every one of his people, from where Benny pocketed another $2 of favor, but those that went beyond simple beatings were paid separately. So a broken limb cost $200 and a murder $500 per person, when frightened by prison or worse than a death sentence, Fine made a deal with the authorities. His place was taken by Jacob Argan, nicknamed Little Augie, who in gang and got sculpted after being released from prison in 1922. Argan continued, we beat the policy of our predecessors. We get money, and when in 1924 Rothstein brought him to the communists before Aji didn't ask too many questions, he had no it didn't matter that the communists wanted to take over the trade unions in order to influence the revolutionary mood. It didn't matter that Rothstein milks these very communists giving gangsters on whom he could influence not only them but also the industrialists that allowed him to manage strikes as he needed. Argent just did something that knows how to beat people, and it turned out both a minute payment and when sculpting with Shapiro tried to convey to him that it was up to them to seize the trade unions. It was up to them to manage the strikes themselves and thus, influential manufacturers, receiving from them much more than now. Many said that he was not interested on this basis. This conflict flared up between Orkin and those who scored at the end of the 1920s scales in the gang of Shapira and accountants. The latter understood how to act in order to secure a comfortable old age, and Aji was an obstacle in their path. An excuse for the conflict to cross over in the active phase there was another sweatshirt in which the gang with the order participated, as they agreed with the boss on termination of the strike, having paid him $50,000. But Coulter opposed operating on the fact that continuing it can be will knock out the conditions much better. Ogie, of course, refused because of which the modeling and Shapiro broke away from the group, taking with them loyal people. The order united to strengthen their positions with the Diamond Brothers, another famous prohibition era gangster. However, it didn't help him on October 27 accounted Shapiro hunted down and killed Ogie Jack Diamond who was with him that evening, survived the assassination attempt, but refused to resist the modeling thus. But Coulter got rid of the last competitors in the area of labor racketeering in the clothing industry, where 
Jewish gangsters because you must understand that even though the sculpting at that time was probably the biggest racketeer, the Italian mafiosi also did not sleep if Luis nightmared those areas where Jews predominated. Then the mafia ripped off those there were more Italian immigrants. This is, in principle, very characteristic of the national crime of the states, which is formed due to migrants of the first second generation. Now Buckhalter could conduct business as he had long wanted, and he began to be well acquainted him in the clothing industry. The trade unions are accustomed to the fact that outside the strike gangsters just sit on the payroll and do not. Glean were not ready for the fact that the shadows just come out of the shadows and start attacking their yesterday's employers. Through threats and beatings, Buckelter, together with Shapiro, took control control one union after another scheme of capture while it was a pro-state disgrace union leader hires sculpting cans for work, whether it's a strike or suppression of internal dissension, no matter Luis besides money asks for this, that how many of you his people became union members, the work for which Buckhalter was hired is being performed. In the best possible way the leader of the union is satisfied that's just after a while people the sculptors with the same threats of beatings arrange a revolution of the union and take it under their control well after louis can already influence the manufacturers through the organization of strikes extorting money from them for quiet work their factories also worked out sculpting industrialists hired him to do their work but inside the enterprise its people remained who exercised control in the same ways of threats and beatings, which even more allowed Louis to extort money, and if the functioning of the plant was not particularly important to him, then sculpting, and completely squeezed out the credit line of the enterprise to the maximum when the owner could no longer pay the bills, he simply left his alone to deal with bankruptcy, in addition to production. Buckhalter seized and transported clothes, then most often not it was sewn at one factory, and before it turned out to be in the store it passed through several contractors, but it was transported most often private firms working under a contract and not being part of any factory or sticky united most of such firms into one association, naturally controlled by him after which he could disagree with his terms we simply deny logistical ties to factories of course after such a combination transportation prices sharply rose in price and buckelter took all the windfall profits with its partners the only area in the sewing industry where louis could not penetrate belonged to the production of fur products where he was strongly rebuffed and the gangster left them alone switching to controlling what was already captured and reconnaissance of other spheres alone of which as a result the baking industry became modeling disparate firms a single association of carriers and then extorted money from industrialists through strikes in addition to in these areas but Coulter also penetrated the trade unions of cameramen shoe manufacturers taxi driver bag manufacturers poultry farmers and after the death of the Dutch Schultz he took over part of the trade unions of restaurant workers he did all these captures of course not alone by the beginning of the 30s there were about 50 in the grouping of Shapiro's accountants people in subsequent years their number only grew partly of these fighters as a result even get the name of the murder corporation so loudly in the name of this Brooklyn gang controlled of course journalists came up with an accountant and then, based on this name, so many rumors appeared that Order of Assassins because of the game of the same name, it can nervously smoke on the sidelines. For example, there are rumors that the new killers in the gang invariably received the old killer as the first order, who had already performed a few hits, and thus the top got rid of a lot of knowledgeable people new killer afterwards was eliminated in exactly the same way. And in other rumors, these new killers did come from local punks barely approaching the age of 18. Those who did the best work were not killed, but were transported to the category of so-called professionals who sat on a constant salary and performed especially important orders and who paid them for it correctly. The crime syndicate at the head of whose private army they were the number 
The gang ranged from 500 to 1 in a thousand people. The number of murders and not a single one at all thousands of victims is just a great story for a cool action movie or a detective where the investigator catches the most dangerous gang in the world. However, the reality, as always, turned out to be much more prosaic on any they did not sit on the salary of the crime syndicate. Since there was no crime syndicate, those who had me for a long time looks already know why those who are not familiar with my video The Birth of the American Mafia actually, and that's all the rest was greatly exaggerated. It was an ordinary gang that, like the others, was engaged in racketeering extortion, usury, prostitution, and other legal activities, and already as a secondary job carried out orders for Buckholder. Whether they could commit murder for the Mafia, quite Luis was familiar with the same Luciano, with Anastasia, was on very good terms at all. So it was no different to bring them together that they didn't kill on the level modern drug cartels and were never a private army. It was a gang ordinary scumbags who eliminated dozens, maybe hundreds, but not thousands of people. Oh well, murder corporation. This topic is for a separate video in the context of the history of modeling. You must understand what he was with connected with them they carried out orders for him and in the future they will also become one of the reasons for his problems with the law right now I propose to move on and talk about another illegal time. The trace that the Jewish had a hand in gangster namely about the drug trade. This story goes back to 1920 when a certain Jacob Kattenberg worked as Narneld Rootstein directing a delivery heroin from China to the States at 28 Rothstein and died from Jacob began to administer operation on his own. However, by 1935, he was either blocked by channels through with which he transported goods, or some other problems prevented him from working. In general, Berg came to the cage and asked help in order to arrange the smooth receipt of goods on American soil. Buckelter agreed, but he set his conditions for money. He does not invest, but only solves problems with wholesale sales of imported heroin. He gets 50% sell drugs only to dealers that Luis trusts, that is, those who somehow work for him, and from them he will still receive 50% of retail sales. Kattenberg, of course, got a kick out of such requirements, but to refuse one of the most influential gangsters of that time. Moreover, when he himself came to him, it was not just stupid, but also dangerous, and Buckelter really solved the problems with customs and without investing a cent entered the business on. Heroin smuggling however, drugs were, of course, a kind of investment for him along with the same legal investments that he made for reports before the tax. The main earnings all the time remained labor racket yes, and no wonder you finally think about it. He managed to subdue an industry that in the 1930s produced an estimated 500 million pieces of women's clothing and 250 million male did not forget at the same time that he had a presence in other areas and then estimate how many he could earn with his extortion unfortunately of course no one gave us exact figures and even calculations which the FBI did also did not bring much clarity on this issue. They stated after the condemnation of the modeling that he earned from 2 to 50 million dollars a year but even if you take the minimum figure from the statement and transfer it through a special service to a modern equivalent, you will get more than 35 million dollars a year or almost 3 million monthly. With this money, modeling could not deny yourself anything. Travel to Europe, pressed on best resorts in America, good home car suits he had a life about which he could not even dream of when he stole wallets from passers-by as a child. However, having climbed so high, Buckelter could not do not attract the attention of the authorities. Attorney Thomas Dewey has just imprisoned the king of underground lotteries, the Dutch Schultz, put Charles Lucien in jail for organizing prostitution and decided that in his collection of scalps lacks the prominent Tinder rocket launcher. So on his Rotara sculpting appeared which is very will soon forget what is a calm and well-fed life. The fall of Buckhalter began in 1936 when the case of labor racketeering in the fur industry. I already said earlier that this is the only area that in the clothing industry production could not capture the modeling there. He received not only a forceful rebuff, but also a person who dared to give testimonies against him punishment he eventually did not receive. 
having managed to justify himself in the Court of Appeal, but brought to himself close attention to Dewey prosecutors had previously developed sculpting. But after the trial he finally realized that he could become for him another big fish. Jew decided to focus on those acts of an accountant that he committed in the baking industry all began with an investigation into the murder of William a Sniper in 1934. Snyder then headed the Association of Flower Carriers, an accountant. He did not suit him in this position. Therefore, according to him by order of Snyder, he was killed by the Goldust brothers, who then facto led the way. However, as often happens in such cases for whom it was possible to find refused to testify and the case fell apart did this stop Dewey on the contrary received a clear signal where to dig by starting a thorough review of the affairs of the Association of Carriers of Modeling Flour. Here I realized that I smelled fried and went on the run. So, according to the results of the check in the dock, his place was empty instead. Max Silverman and William Goldus and Benjamin Spivak were convicted of labor racketeering. All three naturally worked for an accountant for the Gilepka himself in the same area. A separate case was opened in which it was already all over the place the testimony of Max Rubin, the long-term right hand of an accountant who knew a lot. Plus he sang, and one of people of Katzfenberg, yes, in the Bureau of Narcotics Control, the whole scheme of his operation while putting it as the main one in her accountant well, and so that Louis definitely doesn't get out of the way and presses the Goldust brothers in the case of the attempt on the Snyder, these broke down agreeing to testify about the cases of modeling in the baking industry with such a set of charges Buckalter could well spend the rest of his life in prison that he most likely did not want to solve this problem. He I decided in the most typical way for myself, very similar to the well-known expression no body no it's only in the case of modeling it sounds more like there is no witness no prosecution the first thing with such a strategy had to do it hides so the authorities wouldn't find him before they ran out of living witnesses to what in fact it was not an easy task Dewey announced a reward of $25,000 for his head and the same Hoover promised on behalf of the FBI and in New York a special police department was created consisting of 50 people who engaged exclusively in the capture of an accountant. And even in such conditions, Bread was successfully managed for several years hide and manage his empire in parallel with this, eliminating everyone who could denounce him in court. And on the one hand, it really worked. Dewey was very nervous about the fact that others were missing people who could at least something to talk about the affairs of Buckelder. He even convened a closed meeting on this occasion where, together with the FBI and the assassin, he discussed how can influence the current situation. But on the other hand, due to this behavior of the boss, many subordinates they began to fear for their lives because modeling was enough for the slightest suspicion to sentence a person to death. That there was already a precedent when Louis was wrong, Max Rubin, whom I mentioned above, was sent by an accountant away from New York. However, after a couple of weeks, she obeyed the boss and came back to see her family on this. At the same moment, he received a call for interrogation, QE to knock. While Rubin was not going to accountant, did not believe him and sent people to kill him. Max miraculously survived after the assassination attempt and radically changed his mind to cooperate with the authorities, becoming key witness in the bread racketeering case of the bakery industry. Another disadvantage of this strategy was that it offended the rest of the top of the criminal world of crime from New York one way or another had a connection in the regional structures. Such cooperation was mutually beneficial and allowed both parties to enrich themselves. However, when you have a hunting for public enemy number one with whom you basked together yesterday under the Florida sign, then the authorities begin somehow less willing to make contact, fearing, among other things, that this hunt will hurt them. And their four other bosses, most of the Italian mafia began to think about how to quickly stop this whole farce. They decided that the best way here is to personally surrender the sculpture to the authorities. For them, this option was also beneficial and that it would be possible, after the conviction of Buckholder, 
to divide his spheres of influence among themselves. That is, as they say, eat a fish and sit in a causal place. But in order for the modeling not to resist such Oni's decision through Albert Anastasia, who helped Luis Hyde, convinced him that the surrender would take place in advance according to the discussed scenario. Buckhalter will have to surrender personally into the hands of FBI Director Hoover. According to the testimony, he will receive only for drug dealing and no more than 12 years Sticky, who was threatened at times more agreed, and the Mafia really agreed that he surrendered personally to Hoover. And on August 24, 1939, Anastasia drove Louis to a meeting with the director of the FBI, Sev Carr, after driving a few hundred meters and exchanging a couple of sculpting phrases with Hoover. I realized that he had been deceived, no deal. As you understand, in fact, it was not, but the gangster received the promised $50,000 for the surrender of Buckholder is unknown. In the first case he was tried for was drug dealing. It happened because Louis turned himself into the federal the government and the case of smuggling was also federal by the way in the future the fact that he was first tried for heroin very much spoiled the due and the actuation of the sentence in the case that he led Kadenberg who suggested modeling enter into drug smuggling gladly acted as a witness in this case to get leniency on term Plus, it turned out that among the smugglers, there was also an undercover agent tell Cairns V. It was impossible for Louis to get out of here, and in January 41, he received 14 years in prison. Then after a couple of days, he already had another meeting in which the prosecutor was Thomas Dewey Sticky in New York appeared on trial for labor racketeering in the bakery garment industry here, as in the case of Drug V. He was testified by his former accomplices who went for it not only because of the fear of spending the rest of the time for bars, but for fear of being killed if the modeling of their existence seems burdensome. Because even after it arrests of the death of objectionable people still continued in the end in March 1940 by racketeering case, he received another 30 years in prison. However, as it turned out, the worst was just ahead of the release of the killers. With the infamous murder corporation spoke to authorities in cages knew that he could say so much that the only sentence for him could only be electric chair. However, in order for such a forecast to become real, the authorities needed to find evidence beyond the words of Rayless. Since in New York it was impossible to judge a person solely by the words of his accomplice, the only case in which this succeeded was the murder in 1936 of trucker Joseph Rosen sculpting squeezed him out of the trucking business, and without thinking, he blurted out somewhere that he would go to the authorities and tell everything as soon as it came to buckle to Rose was no longer a tenant. The law enforcement managed to find enough witnesses to restore the whole chain of events from how sculpting gave the order to when this order was implemented. So even the release that mysteriously fell out of the window is not interfered with the trial there. And without him, there were enough people to win this case. But even understanding where and to why everything is going, refused to make a deal with the authorities twice. So far, the investigation has offered mitigation of punishment for this case in exchange for his testimony in the so-called murder corporation case which originated from the testimony of release on contract killings performed by their sculpting gang was rejected both times suggestions well since he did not agree to give something to the authorities they tried him to the fullest extent and on november 30th 1941 louis buckhalter was sentenced to death the first and only once in the states an organized crime boss of this level received such verdict if you think that the intricacies of buckhalter's story are over then you are mistaken one snag in the drug case, like I said earlier, had federal status the rest of the cases were handled at the state level. So, by law, before it could be enforced sculpting's death sentence had to serve as 14 years for trading the only loophole that allows this to bypass the federal presidential pardon to go straight to punishment in the case of the state. However, everything was not so simple here. The president then was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Democrat Thomas Dewey, who had the greatest political ambitions, was a Republican. And it was then that big politics came into play while serving a sentence in the federal case sculpting. To put it bluntly, was under the jurisdiction of President Di Roosevelt pardon Louis immediately passed into the jurisdiction of Dewey, who ruled the ball in New York. 
first as a prosecutor and then as a governor. Why is this important, you ask? People close to Roosevelt at one time had a business relationship with an accountant. For example, Sidney Hillman, as the head of the United Clothing Workers Union, he worked very closely with sculpting often using the services of his thugs. Roosevelt was afraid that if he handed over Buckalter to Dewey, he might try to offer him a deal. He turns in all the dirty functionaries from among the Democrats, and in return he receives mitigation of punishment agree to such modeling it would be the end of a career as many subordinates and Roosevelt himself, and a sharp increase in the political weight of Dewey. That is why the execution of Buckalter was continually delayed for more than two years and power found a compromise on this issue only at the beginning of the 44th and Louis was transferred to the state of New York. But even here the law did not stop to mock the sculpting on March 2nd. An execution was scheduled. He was prepared for it and Dolly eat the last dinner he ordered and then it turned out that due to legal procrastination it should be once again postponed for 48 hours so on March 4, 1944 he lead to his last supper again for this really last a couple of hours later. They put him on an electric table, shocked him and the doctor declared I declare this man officially dead it was the story of Louis sculpting an accountant and as a conclusion I want to use folk wisdom that says you reap what you sow. Our biography has come to an end. Thanks for watching. Do not forget about the support of the channel in the form of a subscription and like. Hugged everyone.